you know, it's, it's too bad not everybody knows the time and season we're in. But it's sure essential. If you can look around the world, you can tell something's about ready to happen. Not only is it ready to happen, and it's happening, and it's going to escalate. You know, we pray for our country. Our, our, our praying for our country is a hope that it comes to salvation before it's too late. Because it cannot be restored. It's done. It's over with. I don't care how much money you put away. I don't care what's what. The Bible says you can throw all your gold out in the streets and it ain't going to do you no good. Your only way out is through Christ Jesus and following what he says. That's it. This is where we are right now. You know, God allows certain things to happen. It says that when evil reaches its climax, the Lord will return. As things begin to escalate. Satan will come, he will go and put himself and proclaim himself as God. He will come in the natural realm, in a body, and proclaim himself as God. Three and a half years later, we will return with the Lord, as long as you're right with God now. <laughs> and in the things that are going on right now, it's the time to be in, we talked about being deeper aware of what's happening. In other words, the Bible tells us that the, de the de um, devil seeks whom he can devour. And the word tells us that we need to be more sober, more vigilant. In other words, alert, consistent, and more sensitive to the things that are going on right now. In other words, we're to be looking beyond the temporary. We're to be looking beyond the natural and realizing what's the influence of every circumstance that's happening. Paul stated, we don't fight flesh and blood, but powers of darkness, wickedness in heavenly places, principalities. Those are demonic forces. Those are Satan's kingdom. Those are demons, hybrids, fallen angels. All of these things that are on the unseen realm. In fact, some of them are already here in the physical realm. Most people don't even realize it. But they are now ruling countries that are now in political positions that are now judges they are sold out and sold their souls over to Satan we have a DVD called reality series I encourage you to grab one hopefully we have more here if we don't you can always go to eternallibrary.org and watch it and it will begin to bring you to an arena that things that are unseen to become seen because if you're proclaiming to be a believer if you say you're a, a, a saved Christian then you have a responsibility of making what is unseen to become seen if you are really a Christian that means Christ like Jesus came to destroy the works of the devil and it's been passed on to me and you because he left his body here so one of the things that has to happen is we must learn because we must be trained. We're not here to come to a Bible study. We're here for training. This is about a military mission. This is not about some religious thing that the enemy tries to impart into individuals. If you notice in the world, if you mention Jesus, people run. You mention Muhammad or Allah or they want to hear about it. Because the world is ruled by darkness. You mention Jesus in a public place, you get thrown out. Especially in the courtroom sometimes. <laughs> Unless God sends you in there to proclaim Christ. And I've seen it happen. But we got to be led by the Lord, and that's the difference. If we're not sensitive enough, we won't be led by the Lord. We'll be pushed by the devil. Anybody ever been pushed, anxious? I gotta. That's being pushed. You know, people think that there's some kind of physical problem. No, it's a spiritual problem. Then they go to the doctor, and the doctor gives them medication, and the side effect is suicide. So you, since you're being pushed, you might as well just kill yourself. Doctors are good to a degree. But then there's a degree where they're dangerous. 
the number one killer in this country is medication. The number two killer in the country are doctors. Hello. But I truly believe the number one killer is pride, spiritually. People are deceived. God says, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. So there's a place where God is bringing us and so that we become more sensitive, more aware. You may be here for a specific reason, but God used that to get your butt in this place today. Why? Well, I don't want to hear any of this stuff. Well, you're going to either hear it today or when you get in front of them. See, time is really running out. All your intellectual, all your material will not save you. All your friends, even your pastor, can't save you. Your spiritual advisors can't save you. Only Jesus can save you. That's it. So if you know that you are not right with God today, if you're still living your life and according to your will and not the will of the Lord, you're heading in a direction of eternal damnation. It's a terrible place to be and it's not a game or a thing to play with. There is a place called heaven and there is a place called hell. And the word tells us that those who practice such things of the flesh, who practice fornication, who practice lying, adultery, drunkenness, and all the other things like it will end up separated from God. Well, let me tell you, if you're separated from God, you're sent somewhere else. You know, there's many people that believe, well, there's no afterlife. If there was no afterlife, then there'd be no life now. We all came from God's presence. And that's what we seek and not even realize it, that we're actually seeking God. You know, every one of us in within us really wants to cry out for what is the truth? What's the truth? What? What's the truth? And then something comes across our path that tries to bring a temporary comfort, but then it rolls away. We have a sense of success for a moment and it feels good when we complete something but then it goes away everything goes away in this realm there's only one that doesn't go away that's Christ the Lord Jesus he's the only one that doesn't go away so in this place of a deeper awareness there's something we have to do has everybody ever heard mind over matter well that's kind of like a we call it a worldly saying well, it's mind over matter, you know. But there is a sense of spiritual meaning of mind over matter. What it actually means is spirit over flesh. It means the spirit over the natural things so that things become supernatural. See, when I walked in the world, I had a certain thought pattern it was all about me, myself, and I. Anything to fulfill me. Did I care about people? Yes, I cared about certain people, whatever, but I still came first. You know, there was a point where we'd say, man, I'll die for my kids. But there's a point where when we come saved, it's not about dying for our children or our families. It's about dying for Christ. Because if you have a heart set to that, he takes care of your kids. See, everything has a sense. We have this place in the world that's, we have to be control of it. If we lose control, fear comes. And God says, I've not given you a spirit of fear, but power, love, and sound mind. Let me tell you, power, love, and sound mind are the things, that's when you're walking in the spirit. See, fear keeps you from the spirit realm. 
The word tells us that when, when somebody is being spoken the word of God to change them in a seed, that to help change them, that the devil comes and steals the seed. Then it says it's, it's placed in another area where the person can only go for a little while because they really haven't had root in it. And then another one says, well, when the word is given, it's given to someone, but the cares of this world and all the materialism choke the world. And it's given to someone who's, on, who's been changed, whose heart is truly changed. In other words, our heart must be set to understand. We must be a willing individual, willing to learn. No one comes to the Father unless he's drawn. So when there's a drawing that comes, there's a desire that comes that says, you know, I want to know more. What is this? The Word of God is not forced onto anyone. It's placed. Jesus came and spoke. You know what he said? Follow me. He said, follow me. Would you like to follow me, he said. I mean, he, he, all universe, all eternity came in a body, <laughs> walked into this realm and said, hey, how would you like to follow me? I'm the one that made you. Now this guy's nuts. Well, let me show you a couple of things. He raised the dead. Healed a person. Even Peter cut the ear off of a soldier in the garden. And he said, hold on a second. Slapped it back on his head. You think everybody would have got it then? But he came to fulfill something so that he could die on the cross in exchange for our life. In other words, he died for me and you. And when you give your life to Jesus Christ, you don't own your own. He owns you now. And I'd rather have him own me because the label on me now that seal says lifetime warranty. <laughs> so in this awareness, we've got to become more sensitive. And there's something that has to happen. We've got to utilize what the, even the, what the world has said, mind over matter. In other words, we've got to come to a place where our spirit, man, and our spiritual thoughts are overcoming the things of the worldly thoughts. Would you turn to 3 John chapter 1? I did not speak that way when I was in the world, as I am speaking today. I spoke another way. Every other word was a disgusting word. Every thought was a disgusting thought, basically. I mean, I had good intentions, but never could feel anything. But when the mind of Christ came over and took me over, in other words, I yield. I asked him to possess me. I want to be possessed by the Holy Spirit. <laughs> I mean, I was possessed by demons and nothing worked. I was a dying man. Then when I got saturated and possessed by the Holy Spirit, everything was different. I saw differently. I heard differently. I spoke differently. My intentions were different, my attitude was different, and my motive was different. Everything was set towards how God sees it all. See, a relationship is knowing that the Lord is always in front of you. You know He sees it all, hears it all. He knows what you think. He knows everything. That's called relationship. If you're doing things without acknowledging Him and so forth, then there really isn't much of a relationship. We call it religion. And there's a difference between religion and relationship. In 3 John, in chapter 1. Is everybody there? In verse 2. Let's speak it together. Beloved, I pray that you may what? Prosper in what? All things. Not some things. All things. And be in what? Health just as your Soul prospers. Your soul prospers. Your mind, your will, your emotions, your imaginations. Just as your soul prospers. So there's got to be some kind of conversion, some kind of change there. 
What does he say you got to change it to? For I rejoice greatly when brethren came and testified of the what? Truth. That is in you just as you walk in the truth. I have no greater joy than to hear that my children walk in truth. So there's got to be a conversion of deception to truth. Without a conversion of deception or truth, you stay in deception. But there first must be a willing hour to want to change. I want to change. I don't, I don't want to live this way. And then after you're saved, you still want to change. You want to be more like Jesus. You want to have more compassion. You want to know more truth. Now you're thirsty and hungry for what is righteous. And you become to a place where you hate evil. In fact, you won't even play with it. You won't pet it. You won't approve it. When you're still approving evil, there's no relationship. Has everybody got this? Because you want to approve everything God approves. And you want to disapprove of everything he disapproves. Amen? That's relationship. So we see here the soul must prosper. Now your soul, again, is your mind, your will, your emotions, your imaginations. In other words, the mind is associated with your thoughts. And everything must be associated with truth. The Bible says the truth will set you free. In other words, practicing the truth. First, you got to know the truth. Then you got to practice the truth. And things begin to get set free. In Genesis chapter 1. In verse 26. Then God said, let us make man in our image and according to our likeness. According to our likeness. Let them have dominion. Everyone say dominion. dominion. Over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, over the cattle, over all the earth, over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. In other words, dominion. Now I want you to understand something that they, need, they didn't need dominion over their thoughts then. Because in the garden they were directly with God, weren't they? They didn't have thoughts of evil. They only had thoughts of what God was expressing to them. It's like putting a brand new computer and uploading the software, and you're putting in the things of good and righteous, nothing evil. In verse 27, Then God created man in his own image, and in the image of God he created him male and female he created them, and God blessed them, and God said to them, be fruitful and multiply, fill the earth and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves on the earth. So we see that something was in the garden. In other words, when God created Adam, and he created Eve, he created them in oneness. Their spirit, soul, and body was one. There was no division between them. They were a glorified being. They were eternal. In Genesis 2.15, so when God created him, he, he, it says that then the Lord God took the man and put him in the Garden of Eden to tend and to keep it. To tend. In other words, to oversee it. And to maintain it or protect it. He was there to tend it, to make sure. He was the overseer. Adam was the overseer. And he was also the protector of the garden. So God placed them in that place. In verse 16, And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden you may freely eat, but of the tree of the knowledge of the good and evil you shall not eat, for in the day that you eat of it you shall surely what? Die. In other words, the Lord created a place of schooling, a place of training for reigning. Adam and Eve were spirit, soul, and body. They were one. It was all one. There wasn't anything division in them. They were in there to learn discipline, obedience, and trust. God was creating in them into his image and likeness. But he was training them in that. He said there will be a reward of life if you obey and there will be a reward of death if you disobey. <laughs> it's a judgment of death, isn't it? So they had a choice because God creates us with a free will. 
in 2 Corinthians chapter 11. In verse 3, 2 Corinthians 11, verse 3. It says, but I fear lest somehow as the serpent deceived Eve. The serpent deceived Eve by his craftiness, so your what? Your minds. Be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. In other words, the serpent deceived Eve and established a corrupted mind. Does everybody understand that? Now, and this all happened in the garden. Remember, they were first one, spirit, soul, and body, glorified body, eternal beings. What the serpent did was cause what we call a split personality. You know, satanic rituals, one of the things that they do is when they abduct children or anyone, they bring them through a ritual in Satanism and they abuse them. And when they abused them, what they, the children tried to do, they tried to deepen the pain and bring another personality up so they're not, they can ignore it. But what really happens is that opens a door for demons. That's how they get demons in them. So what occurred in, in the garden was actually a split personality. Listen, you and I were born with a split personality. Now, the medical field calls it totally, you know, they call it all kinds of stuff. I'm not even going to go there. But in reality, you and I were born with a split personality. Why? Because there was a part of you that was good and a part of you that was evil. That's called split personality. Hello? But when we got born again of the Spirit, things changed. But that split personality is still behind you. Something Jesus said was, Satan, get behind me. So to be behind you so that the only character that you're going to be responsive with is the personality of the mind of Christ. No longer of the split personality that we used to carry. Is everybody okay? That's where the word talks about double-mindedness. Unstable. Listen, in this because the mind, you know, the mind is associated with thoughts. One of the fruits of the Spirit says that we're to have self-control. That means control over your thoughts. So one of the first things of taking responsibility in the area of to get set free from the worldliness of bondage or burdens in fears that the world impresses on you, is to first become disciplined and consistent in taking dominion over your thoughts, taking control of your thoughts. Now, there are what we call temporary thoughts and uh, uh, stored thoughts, which are burned in. It's like burned in memory. And in, in this, in the mind, in, in this area, in other words, a thought may come to you. And when you agree with it, you actually can put it into stored memory. When that other, when that thought comes again, like again, these are temporary thoughts. And when that other, another temporary thought comes, you have an opportunity to reject it because it's called temporary. Only your decision by your free will burns that thought into memory. And what it does is it actually changes something in your brain. Then you create a habit. Is everybody with me? A habit. See, thoughts, or voices, what we call, when they're attached to emotion or feelings, it creates an attitude. Are you with me? It creates a what? 
an attitude. Do you ever see people's continents? Oh man, why, you, why do you look miserable? Man, you can tell somebody's miserable. Because the, the thought and a feeling agreed and it produced an attitude. Those are called toxic. They're called what? Toxic. And they contaminate you. Now there is a way out of getting out of all of this garbage. And that's one of the things. That's why the Bible says, do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. In other words, that's why the Bible says, cast down all thoughts and imaginations that will come against the knowledge of God. Taking the thoughts into captivity. In other words, gathering those thoughts. And begin to exchange those thoughts that are lies and deception. A stronghold is nothing but a memory lie. But if we don't recognize it, if we're not aware of it, we're always controlled by what we think or by what we feel. Because now that emotion or that feeling is connected to a thought producing a habit and an attitude. Is everybody with me? Praise God. Ezekiel 36. One of the things that's very essential to understand is thoughts are spiritual. It says that we have, the mind of Christ is not carnal, it's not flesh. Your brain is physical, your thoughts are spiritual. Now your heart is the character of your spirit. So your heart is going to express the condition of your spirit. Now your heart will also express your continence. Has everybody got it? Oh, hallelujah. Ezekiel, is that where I said to go? Okay, 36. Ezekiel 36. There is a lot to this, and there's, so I just want to be led by the Spirit to condense as much as can be and brought so that there's good understanding. In Ezekiel 36 and verse 25, uh, let's start at 23 just so that you can see what does God want to do? He wants to glorify himself within us. He wants to be hallowed. In verse 23 it says, I will sanctify my great name which has been profaned among the nations which you have profaned in their midst. Everyone in this room has profaned the name of God at some time. When, especially when we're younger. We cussed and there's still a lot of people doing GD. And that's not the thing of a movie. It says, have profaned in their midst, and the nations will know that I am the Lord God, says the Lord God, when I am hallowed in you before their eyes. In other words, God wants to do something with us to express himself. He, do, he, wants, us to, he wants to express himself through each and every one of us. He said, for I'll take you from among the nations. Everyone here has probably come from different nationalities or multiple. We're all mutants in one way or another, aren't we? From all kinds of things. And I will take you from among the nations, gather you out of all countries and bring you into your, your own land. And I'll sprinkle clean water on you and you shall be clean. And I will cleanse you from all your filthiness and from all of your idols. That filthiness and idols is associated with your thoughts. And I will cleanse you from all of your filthy thoughts and all of your idols of your thoughts. Has everybody got that? And I will give you a new heart. And a what? New spirit. Why? Because you'll want... Look, you're going to get a new... When you get cleansed... You get a new heart. 
Why? Because you just got a new spirit. Because the heart expresses the spirit. And I will take the heart of stone. Oh man, when we're in the world, we're stony. I will take the heart of stone out of your flesh and give you a heart of flesh. Now look at this. Here's the ticket. And I'll put my spirit in you. I'll put my spirit in you. In other words, I will put my mind in you. I will put my mind in you. I will put my thoughts in you. I will put my purposes in you. I will put my will in you. All of my character, I will put in you. That's why we are fearfully and wonderfully made. I will put this in you. Now look at, and this is going to cause you to walk in my statutes and you will keep my judgments and you will do them. Why? Because you will no longer live for yourself anymore. You will live for Christ. See, that battle within us is tormenting when we're not doing that. It's tormenting. There's such a battle in us that is tormenting. And people run to the doctor. They run to the phone and call the doctor instead of to the throne and get freedom. See, they're running to the presence of evil. Then they try to, they try to replace they're looking for that comfort when they're actually looking for the solution of home. So they spend more time working. Did you ever hear of somebody who's been an addict say, yeah, I got to stay busy to stay free? That ain't free, man. It's called demon management. You're not free. Man, if I don't work, if I don't do this, I'll go crazy. Well, you already are. Because if you got to do those things, you're already crazy. For peace? That's not peace. Well, I got to keep my mind busy. The only reason why they got to keep their mind busy is because those thoughts are not good. <laughs> they don't have control over their thoughts. And because they don't have control over their thoughts, their thoughts have control over them. And because it, it is permanently burned, these thoughts are now burned and they're producing a habit and an attitude. And those thoughts, those burned things can be removed. And what it's going to do is take practice. You know, Word talks about people that are repetitive prayers. But he was talking about those who are on the highways and, and promoting themselves. Thus says the Lord. But I'm telling you, repetitive prayer is changing something. In other words, when you're breaking stuff off, when you're decreeing the word of God, the Bible says that the word is able to, implanted word is able to save your soul. As you're speaking the word of God, as you're speaking the word of God, you're speaking the word of God. What you speak is what you eat. What you eat is, you, is what you become. I'm going to say that again. What you speak is what you eat. What you eat is what you become. So what's beginning to happen, now you're taking and you're exchanging these things that are toxic with health. Again, I always share that you can eat Twinkies all day long and become Twinkie. You become Mr. and Mrs. Twinkie. You may be preserved for a while, but eventually you're going to kick. But what you eat is what you become because what you speak is what you eat. So what will happen by the end of today, you will leave this room and the devil will steal everything from you if you let him. Only if you let him. Either that, you're going to take it and you're going to hold on to it and you're going to begin to allow it to burn because you're going to agree with it. See, when you agree with it, you start, it starts it burning in you. you start, and then it starts changing and releasing things in your brain. Why? What it's going to do? One of the things we want to do is break habits, don't we? That's why when a, a tennis player, a football player, whatever it is, what are they doing? They're practiced to break what? Habits. I just heard a testimony about a, a, a quarterback that was, uh, he learned certain things in college and they said, they ain't going to make it in pro this way. And for a whole year, they began to give him certain exercises to build up certain muscles in his arms and shoulders to break the old habits of the way he threw. But at first they had to start here. 
See, there had to be a connection of removing the toxic and bringing the health. That's why it's so important to be consistent in things. Amen? To be disciplined. Is everybody okay? Hallelujah. And Genesis 11. In verse 1. Genesis 11, verse 1. Is everybody there? Now the whole earth had one language and one speech. And it came to pass that they journeyed from the east and that they found a, a place in the land of Shinar and they dwelt there. Then they said to one another, Come, let us make bricks and bake them thoroughly. They had brick for stone and they had asphalt for mortar. And they said, Come, let us build ourselves a city and a tower whose top is in the heavens. Let us make a name for ourselves, lest we be scattered abroad over the face of the whole earth. But the Lord came down to see the city and the tower which the sons of men had built. And the Lord said, Indeed, the people are what? One. And they all have one language. And this is what they begin to do. Now, nothing that they purpose to do will be withheld from them. This is called mind over matter. Because their thought patterns became one. They all got together and had the same purpose. It's like somebody, everybody reading the same blueprint and studying it and studying it and studying it. So that when they got together, they could actually interact and do everybody else's job or duty. And what are you saying is, now it's been burned into their brain. Now they've created a habit and an attitude and nothing can be withheld from them. Nothing. That's why when it's time, when it's, it's uh, when you're ministering or talking to an individual that has been bound by drugs and alcohol or just in fornication or worldly, they don't want to hear anything because they can't receive it. Their brain is so burned with all of this garbage and toxic that they've got to come to a point where it's almost, I can't live this way any longer. I can't live this way. And they know that they're still thinking of all of these goofy things until the light of Christ, the truth of Christ starts coming in and breaking off those toxic thoughts and memories and start replacing them. That's where we start to create new memories. And we become healthier. We become more clear. We become more loving. See, God's love begins to penetrate all of those areas. And we begin to change. Lust no longer has dominion. I didn't say it was gone. <laughs> I said it didn't have dominion anymore because now God's love has dominion. But you must allow that to happen. You know, you must have a willing heart, a desire to understand and be willing to humble yourself for things to change. Because now you're willing to make exchanges. Amen? This is where they had mind over matter. In Proverbs 23 and verse 6. Is everybody okay? Oh God, help me. <laughs> Proverbs 23 and verse 6. It says, do not eat the bread of a miser. That's one who has an evil eye. In other words, don't partake of them. So what he's saying, when, you know, the Bible tells us that uh, bad company corrupts good habits. Because what's happening is even your environment can begin to alter certain things. That's why we shake the dust off from where we're at. So in this it says, um, 
do not eat the bread of a miser. In other words, when you get with someone that's got an evil eye or whatever, they begin to say certain things. If you begin to agree with them, you're going to eat what they're saying. And it begins to affect you. Nor desire his delicacies. For as he thinks in his heart, so he is. So everyone say, as I think, so I am. Now, thoughts are of the mind. Has everybody got it? So you're either going to get thoughts that are stored memory, all right? Or you're going to get new thoughts that are temporary. And if you're living on your stored memory thoughts that are toxic, you are toxic. Has everybody got this? Well, what do you mean by toxic? Well, I mean by toxic is that the presence of evil through the thoughts is still ruling your life. But I'm a believer. But the word believe means to follow. So if you're truly a believer, you're going to follow till you change. And you're going to follow them all the way home. It's when people stop truly following. They think coming to church is following. They think tithing is following. No, following means of your spirit, soul, and body following. To where you're willing to do whatever it takes. You no longer have a life of yourself. Your life is Christ. He owns you, not you. I do not own this life. He does. When I owned it, I messed it. Now I have a lifetime warranty. Amen? Amen? Look at 2 Corinthians chapter 3. So as a man thinks, so he is. That's called mind over matter, isn't it? So we're changing the brain also because the brain will promote habit, doesn't it? You don't even realize you're blinking when you're blinking because that's a part of a function of the brain that releases because it's a part of a habit. Is everybody okay? So when you begin to change the memories of your thoughts, it begins to change the chemicals in your brain. That's called mind over matter. You won't need to go get whatever they give you over at the doctor. What is it? Dopamine or I don't know. Stupid mean? Goofy mean? Deceptive mean? <laughs> 2 Corinthians chapter 3. Would you read it with me, please? Do we begin again to commend? Is everybody there? 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 1. Do we begin again to commend ourselves, or do we need as some others epistles of commendation to you are letters of accommodation from you. You are our what? Epistle written in our, in our hearts, known and ready, read by what? All men. Clearly you are an epistle of Christ ministered by us, written not with ink, but with the what? Spirit of the living God on the tablets of stone, but on, tab not on tablets of stone, but on the what? tablets of flesh that is of the heart. So in other words, it's written. And what we need to do is rewrite. So as you cooperate with the Holy Spirit, things are getting rewritten in you. But it takes cooperation. It takes learning. Because if you don't learn, you burn. Burn. You're going to get burned, and the devil's going to use you to burn someone else, or you can eternally burn, right? Does everybody understand this area of mind over matter? As a man thinks, so he is. Why? Because it's going to change your attitude, your habits, whether you react or whether you respond. So we've got to remove as many toxic thoughts as possible. Start getting rid of all of this toxicity. Stop contaminating our spirit. 
Romans 2. Verse 12, uh, verse 11. Romans 2, 11. For there is no partiality with God. For as many that have sinned without the law will also perish without the law. And as many have sinned in the law will be judged by the law. For not the hearers of the law are just in the sight of God, but the what? Doers of the law will be justified. For when Gentiles, hello, who do not have the law, by nature do the things in the law. These, although not having the law, are a law to themselves. How they are a law to themselves. Who show the work of the law written where? In their hearts. In other words, you were born with what is right and wrong. Their conscience also bearing witness and between themselves their what? Thoughts accusing or excusing them. And the day when God will judge the secrets of men by Christ Jesus according to the gospel. In other words, the secrets of men according to truth. We just turn to uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 14. In verse 2. You know, there are... There are so many things that are burned in our memory that is preventing individuals from really going forward. Even believers that are looking, they just don't know what the burned memory is that's holding them back. You know, first of all, I want you to understand that God's love is unconditional. His love for me and you doesn't change. He's, his love for the sinner is the same for one who's not a sinner. Because he created all men. Everyone has come from God's presence. But one of the things that have been breached is God's love because of the voice of the stranger that burns that. And then every time something happens, we have a tendency to say, oh, God doesn't love me. Why does he allow this to happen to me? It's got nothing to do with God loving you. It's got to do with your memory, your thought. Until those thoughts of toxicity are removed and replaced with God's love thoughts towards us. We always start to react instead of respond. See, this is what we say we want to live from the future, not from the past. We live from the future of who we are, not from the past of who we were. There's a difference. But the enemy always wants to bring you to the past. Again, he wants to keep you in that place even of fear because he knows that will nullify a sound mind, love, and power. In 1 Corinthians chapter 14, in verse 2, it says, For he who speaks in a tongue does not speak to men, but to God. For no one understands him. However, in the Spirit, he speaks mystery. So when an individual is praying in tongues, which is available for everyone, but there is a burned area that's preventing an individual from getting or receiving. Whether it's on, they feel unworthiness, whether there's something that's been traditionally taught, something is there. That needs to be removed. It is a toxic thought that's preventing an individual from getting more of God. How many of y'all want more of God? Amen. So in this, it doesn't mean that a person is bad. Hello? It's got nothing to do with that. There's an area of deception by a burned memory that is constantly expressing a rejection of God in this area. So listen, it says, the person who prays in tongues speaks directly to God, but he has no understanding. However, he speaks mysteries, because the mysteries go into the spirit. Has everybody got it? The mysteries go into the spirit. See, intellectual, people want to understand everything. I don't know, I'm not going to pray in tongues, I don't know what I'm speaking. Praise God, you finally got out of the way. 
See, there's a sense of fear that a person doesn't want to lose control. Does everybody understand that? Now, I'm using this as an example in an area of uh, burnt things. So, in this, it says in, um, in verse 14, would you read it with me? For if I pray in the tongue, my what? Spirit prays, but my understanding is what? Unfruitful. So when you pray in the spirit and tongues, you don't understand nothing. Hallelujah. And neither does the devil. So, go to Psalm 1. In other words, now you can have the interpretation of what you're praying, but there's a time when there must be a place of rest, what they call meditation. I'm not one that meditates, I visualize. <laughs> I like visualization, not meditation. So meditation just means in the area of being still and looking. It's called visualization. So we're searching. See, but the enemy doesn't want you to be still. He wants your thoughts to be scattered. And he always wants to get you into the places, what if, 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 what if it doesn't work? What if it doesn't? That's a toxic thought. If God said it, it's already been approved. So everybody got it? If God said it, it's already been approved. So in this, in Psalm chapter 1, oh, Hallelujah. Is everybody there? Let's speak this for a moment. Oh. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law he what? He what? Day and night. He meditates. He meditates. He's always thinking of the things from God. In other words, you are ca taking captivity of the things that are not of God and replacing them with the things. That, no, I don't have to take that. No, I don't have to take that. Does everybody got it? What am I doing? I'm creating new memories. Now listen. That's why when somebody who's backslidden and has been away for a while, because they're not constantly keeping the word, they're not speaking it, they're not getting in God's presence, they begin to drift more. And the enemy begins to replace everything that they've learned, everything that they've experienced, and he convinces individuals that it's a lie. I've seen that happen over and over and over. Well, that, that was just my imagination. Oh, really? What do you call that extra leg? The one that you didn't have before or the one that was short before. Now it's grown. What about the arm that was broken? Now it's healed. See, what the enemy wants to do is always bring you back to your past so you react instead of respond. So you, you know, the Bible says that because the devil tries to get you back, it says that we'll go back to our vomit. It's called an abomination. Anyone who goes back to builds on what he's been set free from. It's abomination. Is everybody okay? See, what we're, we need to do is go into this place of rest. Because look, when he goes into that place of rest and meditation or visualization, in other words, he's taking time and resting. He's actually beginning to bring forth the thoughts and examine them. You know what? What were my thoughts today? Man, this has been written down on. Whoa, I need to remove this, this, this. You know, sometimes you need to get a pen and paper out and think about what were the toxic thoughts today and begin to go over them and remove them with what God says. Has everybody got that? Just remove them with what God says. Oh, I got a spirit of, I, I, you know, I'm just anxious, fearful, anger. All of these things are toxic thoughts. You know, if we'll just take time to begin even to write them down. Why? Because as you write them down and you begin to remove them, you're going to start speaking and it's going to begin to remove that habit of rejection, that habit of doubt, 
that habit of unbelief. Does everybody got this? That habit of fear. In other words, there's certain things that all of a sudden a wall comes up. Boom. I ain't getting, I'm not, no. And then when you really find the truth about what's what, you're willing to take the wall down. See, only you build the wall and you take it down. Is everybody all right? Praise God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Go to Psalm 42 for a sec. I got a bunch of this, but I, I, like I said, it's mind over matter. Spirit over flesh. Thoughts, spiritual thoughts, your mind will change your brain and the chemicals that are released. You have the opportunity, the ability, the power, and the strength through Christ Jesus to take dominion over every circumstance and situation so that you are not moved by them. I didn't say you wouldn't be attacked. Every one of us gets attacked. I got attacked this morning. I felt like garbage. My stomach was a tossing and a turn, and I could barely drink the stuff, man. I thought, man, I'm just going to, all right, I'm just going to give up. I'm going to lay. I'm going to call Wade and say, go service, do service. I, this is what the thought patterns were coming to me. I'm like, wait a minute. I said, Lord, you know that I don't, I don't preach anything I don't experience. He said, now you can preach it. <laughs> me and my big mouth. Lord, you know I can't preach anything I don't experience. Well, now you can preach it. So anyways, I'm here. So I just began to fight and battle and quote, cast, get rid of this, get rid of that. I'm not going to go by how I feel. My confidence was downcast. <laughs> then I, Whoa! Chase it. My daughter says, Dad, what's the matter with you? Are you all right? She came in my room this morning course it was you look like garbage you know <laughs> Wait a minute. I had a battle I had a fight I had to make some exchanges break all that stuff off not allow my brain to get burned with that stuff get rid of those toxic thoughts I'm decreeing who I am in Christ and who he is in me and we must all do that I experienced it this morning. Listen, I don't care how long you've been a believer. I don't care how much word you have. I don't care how much spirit you have. I don't care if you've raised 50 people from the dead. You're still going to get attacked in any way that the devil can attack you. Amen? Woohoo! Psalm 42. Psalm 42. Hallelujah. In verse 11, it says, why are you cast down, O my soul? O my soul, why are you cast down? And why are you disquieted within me? Hope in God, for I shall yet praise you. In other words, he just felt like garbage. His continent was cast down. Nothing would seem to be working, right? But he said, I'm going to praise you. Why? Because I know when I praise you, everything's going to change. I'm going to set my mind on you, not me. I'm not going to set my mind on my circumstances. In fact, I may embrace that circumstance to bust it. Not to let it hang around. Amen? Oh, hallelujah. <laughs> Whew. I'm going to close somewhere. Let's go to Proverbs 4. <laughs> yes, thank you, Lord. What did Jesus say? I love it. Proverbs 4, verse 20. Let's read this together, okay? Okay. 
My son, give attention to my words, incline your ear to my sayings. Do not let them depart from your eyes. From your eyes. In other words, because they become visual now. It's burned. See, things get burned when you see them. That's why you always remember a circumstance or an event. It always burns a picture. Don't let them depart from your eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart. For they are what? Life to those who find them. And health to all their, all their what? All their flesh. Keep your heart with what? All diligence. For out of it springs the what? Issues of life. Now look at this. Put away from you a what? A deceitful mouth. Why? A deceitful mouth or what? Bring toxic thoughts. Because what you speak is what you eat. Ooh. Um, put, and put what? Perverse lips far from you. Let your eyes look straight ahead. Your eyelids look right before you. Ponder the path of your feet and let all of your ways be established. Do not turn to the right or to the left. Remove your foot from evil. In other words, step away from it. The Bible says depart from evil. Amen. It's the beginning of wisdom. And we will close at 2 Corinthians chapter 10. You know, the word tells us that faith is the substance of things hoped for. Faith is the substance of things. The word substance is associated with matter. You know? Hope for. In other words, thoughts or imagination seen so that they come to pass, which is associated with mind over matter or spirit over flesh. In 2 Corinthians chapter 10, the word says, If faith does, uh, is not by sight, it's by hearing. But what happens is when you hear it brings spiritual sight. So in this, faith is associated with spiritual sight. So if what you're hearing today, you implement in vision. You put it in a category of vision. And you begin to remove the toxic, toxicity of all the garbage thoughts. And begin to look at some of your some of habits that you might have that are associated with these burned memories. And you begin to expose some of these things. The Bible says expose your enemy. That, let me tell you, your, your toxic thoughts are your enemies. I get people that call me all the time, man, all oh, this and this. Oof. Have you prayed today? No. Why not? I thought I'd call you first. <laughs> Don't call me first, man. Pray first. I'm just going to direct you back to the Lord. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. <laughs> Second Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 3, For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not natural or physical, but they are mighty in God for pulling down strongholds, which our memory lies. Casting down the arguments... And every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought into what? Captivity. In other words, you're gathering them. You're acknowledging them. You're aware of them. You're not allowing those thoughts to control you. You have dominion over them. Bringing them into captivity to the obedience of Christ. In other words, wait a minute. Who told me that word you come from? I'm going to take that thought even though it may be temporary. Now, if it's a temporary thought, it's like, all right, you're not getting in here. I'm going to grab all you temporary thoughts. I'm going to get you, and I'm going to remove you. Now, the burned thoughts that are toxic, I'm going to start to pull up. I'm going to call them before me. Do you understand it? Why? Because he who's in me is greater than he who's in the world. The Bible says that you and I have the authority to judge. What are we judging? Toxic thoughts. You call them before you. You just don't wait for them to come up. You call them before you. And as you call them before you, begin to remove them. Your punishment 
to them is to remove them with the thoughts of Christ. Look at Casting down all uh, arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. Those are thoughts that are coming against what got the truth. Freedom. Bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. And being ready to punish all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. That means you must submit to resist. And as you submit, you have authority. Because if you're not submitting to the authority... You have no authority. Amen? Mind over matter. We could be here for a week, but praise God. Let's use what we got and have victory. Amen? Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed. We ask, Lord, that this imparted seed grow and bear fruit for your glory. Not only be protected by the, word of, by the blood of the Lamb, but let this word penetrate. And I ask, Holy Spirit, that you'll bring to remembrance our authority and dominion and who we are in you. That these thoughts come forth before us, these toxic thoughts to be removed from each and every one. That we all become like-minded, like-willed, and like-purposed with the mind of Christ in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen.